AWS Services. Quick overview. S3 storage classes. S3 standard. This is the default storage class. S3 intelligent tiring. This is used where access patterns are not known. It automatically moves data to the most cost effective storage tire by monitoring access patterns. S3 standard infrequent access. This is for long lived, less frequently accessed data. For example, once in 30 days. Here you are charged for a minimum period of 30 days. S3 one zone infrequent access. This is a variation of S3 standard infrequent access. Here the data is stored in one availability zone. It is less expensive than standard infrequent access storage class. S3 Glacier is for archiving data. In case of Glacier Instant Retrieval, minimum storage period is 90 days and data can be retrieved quickly. In case of Glacier Deep Archive, retrieval time is in hours and it is the lowest cost data archiving solution. And it is used for rarely accessed data. Let's look at various storage types. Amazon EFS or Elastic File System is a scalable shared file storage. Multiple EC2 instances can easily access it. Amazon EBS or Elastic Block Storage can be attached to an EC2 instance. It has limitations around attaching it to multiple EC2 instances. It provides persistent durable volumes and you can create snapshots out of it. Amazon S3 is an object storage. It is highly durable, scalable and cost effective. EC2 instance store is temporary storage on EC2 instance. It provides high IO performance and data is lost on instance termination. Amazon FSx is high performance managed file storage for Windows or Linux systems. Amazon FSx storage. FSx for Lustre, POSIX compliant and suitable for Linux systems. FSx for Windows File Server. It provides Windows native support. Storage gateway types. File gateway. Accesses S3 as NFS or SMB file shares. It acts as a file interface between on-premise applications and AWS. Volume gateway. Volume gateway presents cloud-bagged iSCSI block storage volumes to on-premise applications and manages data in Amazon S3. So it facilitates low latency access for frequently used data and supports snapshots which are stored as EBS snapshots and local caching. So there are two modes in which it operates. In cached mode, primary data resides in Amazon S3 which frequently access data cached locally for quick access. In the stored mode, primary data set resides on premises for low latency access while asynchronously backing up to Amazon S3. Tape Gateway. It offers a virtual tape library for backup and archival needs. It stores the virtual tapes in Amazon S3. EC2 instance launch types on demand. Available immediately without long term commitment. Reserved. They provide significant cost savings for committed usage. Spot instances. Available at lower costs from unused capacity and they can be taken away anytime. Dedicated host. Physical servers dedicated solely for your use. Per host billing. You have control over EC2 placement and they can be useful for regulatory needs. Dedicated instances. These are instances on hardware dedicated to you. There is a per instance billing and you do not have control over instance placement. AWS Security Services. AWS WAV or Web Application Firewall. It provides protection against common web exploits like cross site scripting, SQL injection, etc. AWS Shield, protection against DDoS attacks. It comes in two flavors, Shield Standard, which is free, and Shield Advanced, which is a paid service. Amazon Guard Duty, threat detection and monitoring for malicious activity. Amazon Inspector, 
security assessment, vulnerability scanning for EC2 and other services, KMS, encryption key management, AWS certificate manager, provision manage SSL certificates, Amazon Macy, discover sensitive data, Amazon detective, analyze and investigate security findings, AWS security hub, aggregate security findings, cloud HSM is a hardware based key storage, Amazon Cognito for authentication, authorization and user management for web and mobile apps. Network connectivity types and their key features. VPC peering. This is a private connection between two VPCs. Transit Gateway is a centralized hub for connecting multiple VPCs, VPNs and on-premise networks. It has a hub and spoke architecture. Direct Connect is a dedicated private network connection between on-premises and AWS Cloud. It provides low latency and high bandwidth connection. Site-to-site -site VPN is encrypted connection between on-premises network and AWS VPC established over the internet. It provides secure communication using IPsec protocol. Endpoints Gateway Endpoint this provides secure private connection to Amazon S3 or DynamoDB from within a VPC. Data does not go over public internet. Interface Endpoint This too provides secure private connection to many services powered by AWS Private Link. These include AWS services or those hosted by AWS partners. So what is AWS Private Link? It provides private connectivity between VPCs supported AWS services and your on-premises networks without exposing your traffic to the public internet. The difference between NAT instance and a NAT gateway. So NAT instance is a user managed EC2 instance for NAT. You must provision it manually and it can be a single point of failure. While NAT gateway is a fully managed AWS service, which is highly available and suitable for production loads. Database Services Amazon RDS Managed Relational Database Supports Multi-AZ Deployments for High Availability and Read Replicas for High Read Performance. Amazon Aurora Globally Scalable RDBMS It supports Multi-Region Read Replicas DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database. Supports cross-region replication with global tables. Redshift is a data warehouse for analytics and reporting. DocumentDB is a MongoDB compatible document database. Neptune is a graph database. Timestream is a time series database for timestamp data. Amazon QLDB Ledger database with an immutable transaction log. Migration services. AWS application discovery service. This collects information on servers, running processes, network connections in your on-premise environment using agents, collectors, etc. AWS migration hub. This is a tracking service. This provides centralized tracking of application migrations. AWS Migration Service This helps migrate servers applications to AWS Cloud from your on-premise environment or from other cloud providers. You can also migrate EC2 workloads across regions, availability zones or accounts. It ensures continuous synchronization between the source and target environments during the migration process and creates EBS volumes during this process. So this is a lift and shift migration strategy with little or no downtime. Next we have VM import export. Here we can import VM images from an existing environment to Amazon EC2 and also export them back to your existing on-premise environment. This does not provide live synchronization but is an offline process. 
you can also use it to create a repository of VM images for backup and disaster recovery purposes. So we have this Snow family of devices which support offline transfer of data to AWS. Okay, so first we have Snow Cone. This has a capacity of about 8 terabytes. Then we have Snowball Edge. It comes in um, multiple flavors, storage optimized and compute optimized. So the storage optimized one uh, provides about 80 terabytes of HDD space. And then we have Snow Mobile. So this supports exabyte scale data transfer in a truck and has a capacity of 100 petabytes. Analytics services. Amazon Redshift is a petabyte scale data warehouse. Redshift Spectrum Query is a feature of Amazon Redshift which allows you to run SQL queries from Redshift directly against data stored in Amazon S3. Amazon Athena allows you to query data in S3 in an ad hoc manner using SQL. Amazon EMR is a managed Hadoop framework with support for Spark, HBase, Presto and so on. AWS Glue allows you to create ETL jobs and also provides a Glue data catalog. QuickSight is a business intelligence and reporting tool. Kinesis Services, Amazon Kinesis Data Streams, Ingest Data Streams at Scale, Kinesis Data Firehose, Load Data Streams into Data Stores like S3, Redshift, OpenSearch, etc. Kinesis Data Analytics for real time analytics on streaming data, Kinesis Video Streams, Stream Video from Devices to AWS. AWS organization related services. So the first is AWS organizations. It is used to manage and govern multiple accounts centrally in a hierarchy. Next we have control tower for automated setup for multi account environments. Service control policies for enforcement of organizational policies. And service catalog. This is a catalog for approved AWS services. routing services elastic load balancer there are many kinds of these application load balancer which is suitable for web application traffic and does not support static IP address network load balancer this can be used when you want to directly work with TCP or UDP traffic and it supports static IP address classic load balancer this is legacy and no longer recommended for use Gateway Load Balancer for Virtual Appliances API Gateway It is used to route requests to APIs based on rules. It supports stateless secure HTTP and REST APIs and stateful WebSockets protocol. CloudFront is a content delivery net network and it can cache content at the edge. Using Lambda at Edge feature you can run Lambda functions at the Edge locations. Global Accelerator. It utilizes static Anycast IP addresses to direct traffic over AWS Global Network. It supports rapid failover by dynamically rerouting traffic to healthy endpoints within seconds. Route 53 is a DNS management service and it supports DNS based failover, which may encounter some delays due to DNS caching. AWS Config and Monitoring Services. AWS Config Audit Config Changes and Compliance Systems Manager Centralized Ops Data and Automation Resource Access Manager Share AWS Resources Across Accounts CloudWatch Monitoring Logs Metric Collection and Alarms CloudTrail Records AWS API Activity for auditing of resource changes. AWS X-Ray 
request tracing. Deployment and release management. AWS Cloud Formation. Infrastructure as code. Code commit. Git based source controlled service. Code pipeline. Continuous integration and delivery. Code build. Build service. Compiles source code. Code artifact. Manages software packages. Code deploy. For automated code deployments. Ops works. For automation of resource configuration, it supports Chef and Puppet integration. Deployment strategies. Canary. This is an incremental or progressive rollout of new features or updates to a small subset of users or servers. A-B testing. Here we perform split testing of two versions of something like a web page, app feature, etc. to gauge which version performs better. Blue green. Here we maintain two environments, blue and green. And then we can release new version of our application on green environment and switch traffic from one environment to another to perform our tests. AWS Media Services. AWS Elemental Media Convert. This is for file based video transcoding. Media Live is for live video processing and encoding. Media Package is for media content packaging. And Media Store is a durable media storage. Media Tailor is used for personalized ad insertion. And Amazon Interactive Video Service or IVS offers live streaming and interactive experiences. Amazon AI Services, Amazon Recognition, it's used for image and video analysis. Amazon Poly, text to speech conversion. Lex, for creating chatbots. Comprehend, it has natural language processing capabilities. So it can be used for sentiment analysis or key phrase extraction from text. Amazon Transcribe, audio to text conversion. Amazon SageMaker, it's a platform for building, training and deploying machine learning models. Amazon Personalize. Create personalized recommendations using ML algorithms. Textract. Extract text and data from scanned documents. Amazon Forecast. Generate accurate forecasts based on time series data using machine learning. IoT services, IoT core, it serves as a message broker and has other features like rules engine, IoT device defender, it monitors device behavior for security, IoT device management, it can be used for remote management of devices, IoT greengrass, it extends AWS IoT cloud capabilities to the edge, IoT sitewise can collect industrial data and monitor operations. IoT Analytics is used for analyzing data from IoT devices. IoT Twin Maker It is used for digital representation of physical devices.